Hey there YouTube, Vaughn here today and today we're going to do another product review today I have with me the FC16 GO another uh, Super Nintendo clone portable that we have here now this might be the last Super Nintendo clone portable that I will review I don't know if there's going to be any more coming or any more out there I know there's a lot of clone portables but I basically like Super Nintendo portable more so um, this is so far the last one that I know of that still has Super Nintendo compatibility so might be the last one I'll ever bought and I'm glad that I finally had the chance to get it so yeah this is the FC16 Go from Yobo that's the company that made the uh, FC Twin that I used to have the first clone system that I used to have and now finally get the portable version of that clone so uh, yeah, we're gonna do an unboxing of yours and then we'll test up some games, do a few comparisons in the end, and I'll give you my final opinions of if this is uh, worth buying or not. So, yeah, we got the red and black version here. So, you, as you can see, there's three different versions the red, the charcoal, and the silver. So, I was gonna get the charcoal, but uh, for some reason they sent me the red one here. Hopefully, it's the red one, is it? It's either that or the charcoal ones, but anyways, here's what's inside the box. So as you can see, it has already been opened before, so <laughs> everything is not still in their bag. But there are some stuff here that was untouched earlier. Um, yeah, so inside the box, what you get here is two wireless controllers. So as you can see, these are two these are one of the wireless controllers here so you got your normal d-pad here your select star buttons your b a y x up here you got your l and r shoulder buttons so yeah it's made of a really hard plastic too so that that's um feels very nice it's kind of glossy and uh, shiny if you can put it under the light here as you can see uh the select and star buttons are made of really hard really hard plastic it's not rubber like that of the of the super ritual trio controllers and such uh, they put it actually on they actually put it vertical here instead of down here where like the normal controller used to do and it feels really good in the hands but it it could kind of uh, yeah it kind of leaves a lot of footprints here a lot of fingerprints here too once you play it for a while <laughs> Uh, it uses infrared just like um, just like the classic Sega Genesis console controllers that came with the ad game Sega Genesis so yeah it uses infrared kind of like that but for this system it actually handles the infrared a little bit better uh, it's not bad you can still move it around like this but just can't be too far away or too far apart but yeah overall the controller is very it's kind of it is very good but I've been testing it with this uh, d-pad here the d-pad is kind of a little bit delay at times so but the button here works very good you don't have all of these are um, convicts so it's kind of like the Japanese Super Famicom ones where you have all convicts buttons so Y and X are not concave like North American ones so you don't really have that deep feelings in there anymore it's still all right it doesn't have that rainbow decoration like they do with the with the super famicom controller there and the l and r button still works okay here you have this um plug-in for the two triple a batteries so like before all clone system has to lock out this thing so <laughs> if you put batteries in it you can use this little screw here to lock it in but I don't get why that is necessary considering that you when you plug this in is already locked in so yeah controller overall controller works very really well it's not perfect though you might have trouble playing some other games like fighting games and stuff but for the games that you do use like normal platformings and puzzle games it it's pretty much okay so and then 
other things in the box here is the power adapter so that's for charging the units and then your normal AC pretty much some of the yeah one of the more better AV AV cables than what came with the retro dual portable the videos on here is actually really good it goes really well with your uh, RCAs or or your um, RCRT TVs if you have those so yeah they're really good right there now what we have here is the uh, unit itself it's very hard to get this out of this plastic bag so uh, I was I'll try to get out but earlier getting this thing out takes uh takes a lot to get used to but you actually have to hold this plastic here and push it and then take the unit out that way but yeah you can as you can see it has a very uh, unique clanshell design it's very bulky too yeah it has a very clanshell design you can if you open it like that it looks like this so it looks it has a it borrows this design from Nintendo's own clanshell design the Nintendo DS um, but yeah looking at the unit itself it's very big it's bulky it has these little L and R buttons up here they're not really they're not really like what was on the controller the more they look more like a little bit of triggers instead of shoulder buttons at all but if you're holding the unit like this you can put your two index finger on the L and R like that too but opening the unit up you can see it actually has all of the necessary buttons and d-pad you find on all the other um, Super Nintendo clones so here you have this flat low d-pad here you have the select and start buttons you have the reset button in the middle um, using to reset all your games you have the Y X B A buttons they're not Y and X are not concave just like in the controllers they're not convicts either they're just like they're just like design like this with the engraved letters in there so yeah, it works pretty well uh, you have two big speaker down here this thing if I can say is really loud once you play it so once we test the game on it uh, I'll show you I'll show you how loud it is but <laughs> yeah the, overall this thing is really loud it wants, if, if it gets too loud I'll just turn the volume down a little bit but uh, I'll, I'll show you how loud it is once um, we start playing it but here's the two um, infrared sensors that um, you can uh, sync the two controller with so um, it works really well as long as you're near the units it's it, you don't have any problem with it um, yeah here's the plugs for the AC power adapter so if you want to charge it this is where you plug it into charge uh, here's the AV out for plugging to the TVs uh, here is the volume slider so if you want it to be too loud you can go t all the way to the left if you want it to lower that you can go down there go to the right uh, yeah and then over here is the on and off switch you can uh, turn this thing to the middle and doing that will turn the unit on like that but if you turn it all the way to the right here that actually uh, turn it on but the systems the, the video will go directly to the TV instead of showing it on the unit so if you plug this to the TV and you turn it on on the middle both the video will appear on the units and the TV but if you turn it all the way to the right here you would just um, turn it on to the TV and there will be nothing on the video hopefully uh, not just video but maybe the audio too but someday I'll test that too but yeah so I have to say with the it's a really nice little design here you can look up from side to side uh, here's the cartridge holder here there's nothing to uh, like the Superboy there's, there's nothing to um, really uh, help you uh, hold the cartridge so once you plug it in you just have to hope that it's in there tight maybe if you have plastic and stuff you can use those too but yeah so it's a really nicely little design uh, systems I guess I have the charcoal one I, I don't see any red on it so yeah it might be a charcoal one but 
that's how it is if you stand it up you put it like that like said this you can yeah I the only thing that the only thing that I don't like about this that much is the screen here is kind of small but overall I think that that doesn't really matter much as long as the game works so yep let's test out some games and see how well it, it performs so first game we'll try we got some new games here <laughs> um, we'll try with a repro first this time we, we I never usually start out with repro but for this one I want to try so here's clock towers so a repro I got from uh, GameReproduction.com so you can plug that in just like that so as you if you look at it from like this the cartridge is sticking out right now but once you have a clamshell you don't have to worry because the clamshell blocked it so you don't have to look at the cartridge now we can turn this the unit on and the system is on there it is to point the light a little bit farther so we can see the video as you can tell it's very loud <laughs> so there is clock tower so as you can tell the way I um, the way I controlled this with the d-pad if you if you tap on the d-pad it doesn't go precisely you have to tap the d-pad really hard to actually make it move so if I press up I have to tap it really hard but if I slightly slowing tapping it it usually doesn't work but right now it's working okay so let's go to continue here this is where I last left off with the scissor man following me so here I have to move Jennifer down to this little bed here oh my gosh that's a scary scary music right there the video quality of this looks looks really good too it's just a little bit blurry on the on the camera here but if you actually see the actual uh, screen there look it actually looks pretty okay Let's see like people said here's a here's the mirror here's the mirror choke right here <laughs> Let's see if it chokes does it choke come on choke me I guess it doesn't choke oh there it is Oh my gosh, and it freeze. <laughs> yeah, usually there's a way to uh, survive that, but as of now, it just frozen. So, but that's clock tower right there. So, let's take that game out and let's test it with other games like Killer Instinct here. Let's see how Killer Instinct performs. So, here it is. There it is, Killer Instinct, one of the best fighting game ever on the Super Nintendo. Still playing to this day. Let's see, one of my all-time favorite characters, Fulgore. Combo Breaker. Let's combo break Saber Wolf. Got some really nice arcade graphics there.
the control on here is not really that good. I, I usually I wanna I wanna jump doing a flip jump right there and for some reason Fulgore doesn't jump at all. <laughs> Or maybe the control is kind of a little bit more delayed that he can't jump at all. Yeah, good game, but the control here really ruins it for me. So, not not a good sign for this handheld. <laughs> the D-pad there, although it works, it doesn't work quite that accurate compared to uh, portables like um, this Retro Dual Portable here. <laughs> I'll, I'll make a comparison to this handheld later on, but... Next game let's we have to try is Kirby Superstars, and you know like all the other uh, Super Nintendo clones that I tried so far, the only portable, the only Super Nintendo portable that can handle Kirby Superstars and Super Mario RPGs um, the way it is is the Retro Duel Portable, and that one that one make that one turn these on from the start spot on it doesn't it doesn't uh, cause any problems or you don't have to find any other ways to uh, load them at all they just load but on this one for some reason it does not load so let's let's try if it loads on this time because I had tried a few times and it doesn't do anything like here you can see it's just a black screen right there so you don't get any gameplay at all I even tried using the AC adapter several times too. Never worked. So let's give it one more, one more uh, try. And let's try that again. So I turn it on. Doesn't work. Let's try it one more time. Three times and it doesn't work. Then it's. Then that means that this game was never meant to play in here. Yep, so it never worked. So the FC the FC sixteen go doesn't work with it. Let's see how Toycon here, the F the FC mobile, the super FC mobile. Let's see if that one works spot on with it, huh? Yep. It does. And the volume is very low on this one, so. <laughs> yep, so this one does, does a better job of um, playing Kirby Superstar here over the FC16 Go. How about the Superboy, right? I mean, surely if those two work, the Superboy had to work too. So. Here's a Superboy, and here's Kirby Superstar. Let's see if that one loads it spot on. So, we can turn the volume on, and Superboy has it up here, so does it load right away? And it did. So, Superboy actually did the work too, so. So, that's Superboy right there. Of course, the Super the Superboy deleted all my save files, so, but that's that's still okay. But now, let's try Retro Duel Portable and see if that one loads spot on with this. And I know that this one never had problem with Kirby Superstar before, so as you can tell, it also loads spot on. Let's see. And there it is. So thank you, Superboy. You delete everything, but <laughs> yeah, it's easy to get them back. So so far, with all these portable DFC 16 Go, let's try it again. If all of them don't fail, how come this one does? <laughs> Maybe it's the first one. I don't know. Let's try again. And as you can tell, nothing. After after. All of them did the job. SC16 Go for some reason doesn't want to. So that's a bummer with this one. <laughs> All right, so a big bummer actually because this time let's try Super Mario RPG. This one is the game that everybody wants to play in portable form. So let's uh Let's plug it in and see if it works. I know Kirby Superstar doesn't work, but sometimes it could surprise us with this one. So let's see, does it work? Hmm. Black screen again. 
give it two more time like the other ones. I mean, with with portable like these, you have to give that a chance. So if you don't give it a chance, then you're not having you're not you're not testing it that well. So let's see. Try number two. Uh, nope, black screen again. Third, third time's the charm. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> so it's in there. So the third time. If it doesn't work, then um, a big bummer for this one. Nope, I don't see anything. Surely it should load right now, but. I gotta say, just look at this. You really want to play on this cool design, but doesn't seem like this one want to load Super Mario RPG at all. Now let's see what Toy-Con can do. See if what the Super FC Mobile could do. Does it load a spot on right away too, or does it have problems? We'll find out. Uh, yeah, it has problems. But unlike the FC16 Go, however, even though it has problems with it not charging, if you do plug the game in while this thing is charging, it will load it. So let's say, let's see, maybe we give this one three tries too. <laughs> I mean, it is a Super Nintendo after all. So let's see, one more try maybe. Uh, no. Doesn't work. Last try. Uh, nope. I don't see anything. So, yeah, the Super FC Mobile does good. Does uh, did a good job of trying to load it, but yeah, I just couldn't handle Super Mario RPG. Let's see what the Super Boy can do. The Super Boy also makes Super Mario RPG works as well. But over time, it can't. So let's see if it could do the job on this try here. Hopefully, it works the first time. Uh, nope. Let's see if it works the second time. So second times. See if it works. Yeah, it really tries, but it can't. It just can't do it. Last try. So, let's see. Last try. Does it work? We all know that it works if you plug in the AC adapter, but to me, that's not comfortable. So, if it can't load Super Mario RPG spot on, then it probably won't be able to handle it all the time. So that's the Superboy. So as you can see, three of these fail. Now let's see if Retro Duel Portable has any problem with it. I mean this one is like pretty much the best one when it comes to compatibility. So let's see, does it handle Super Mario RPG with any problems? It doesn't. As you can tell, it works. I don't have to take it off and make three strikes like the other like the other three. So as you can tell, it works really well. Better graphics and <laughs> sounds and all that stuff. Yeah, doesn't have the graphics are not that good compared to Superboy, but at least it works. You don't have to take it out and do three strikes like the other three. So if you have a retro dual portable and you want to play Super Mario RPG, then yeah, this is the handheld for you. So that's it. That's how um, the compatibility with those three is. But so I could say for this portable here, it really does try to be a portable Super Nintendo. It has a good design. It has a nice, some nice little uh, control up buttons up here and the cartridge slots and all that. But the only thing I don't like is that it just couldn't play all of the games. Also, another thing that kind of like Yobo kind of mess up is that for some reason it seems like they fear Nintendo or something or they, they just, um, they just have to, uh, like they're, they're afraid that Nintendo might come after them for um, for uh, making it compatible for
for playing their games because a lot of the products that came from Yobo seems to have some kind of region locks in there and I can show you why if you took this um, Super Famicom game like Hyper Dimension here Dragon Ball Z Hyper Dimensions and you try to put it on the SC16 GO you can tell ugh, I can't put it in there I can't put it in there and you want to know why I can't put it I can't put it in there so you can tell in there you can see those two little black tabs I mean can't really see it you can't really see it from the video here but there are two little uh, black tabs right there anyways I, I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you a better view of those uh, black tabs so you put it in here and you put the light in there you can tell you can see that tabs in there just like inside an actual Super Nintendo that black tab in there will prevent you from playing Super Famicom game but the actual truth is you could still play Super Famicom game in there there's another there's um, the other second tab right here too so that prevents you from plugging Super Famicom games in there but if you could take this out and take those tab out you could indeed play Super Famicom games like this with it too. Now, to me, I don't want to. I don't want to take the hassle of doing that. I mean, I don't want to ruin. This is a cheap little device, so if I take it off, then I might be able to risk. Um, I might be. I might risk. Um, risk. Uh, risk breaking it. So I'm not gonna do that, considering that I already have three others that does the job for me when playing Super Famicom game. So this one not able to do, not able to play Super Famicom game out of the box, is gonna be a deal breaker to some. To me, it's okay. I have some that works, with, works with it. But the way that Yobo does it, the FC Twin, I never, I never noticed that. But back then, I don't play Super Famicom game on my Super Nintendo or other system, but. I just found out that the FC Twin does also have those two tabs as well. So with those two tabs in place, you actually are limited to playing just Super Nintendo games. So if you have Super Famicom then, and you have FC 16 Go, you either had to modify it or you just had to stick with Super Nintendo games. And with that in mind, clock tower here yeah if you have repro you could play it but imagine if you bought the actual super famicom version of clock tower you're never ever going to get to play this game if you bought super famicom super famicom version and you play it on this you're not gonna be able to you have to uh, modify it to enable to do that and yeah that's that's pretty much what the um, FC 16 go could do I mean it could it couldn't play Kirby superstars it can't play um, Super Mario RPGs uh, you can only play Super Nintendo games and you can't play all of the Super Nintendo games too like like I said there's some that doesn't work also um, other um, some of the more advanced game doesn't work as well Street Fighter Alpha 2 here for some reason does not work on it or it does work on it but it doesn't it doesn't seem like it want to work because as you can tell if we plug it in there and we turn it on you can see that just look at it you can hear the music and stuff there it is. and look how look how glitchy and um blocky all the graphics are yeah. so that's gonna that's that's gonna that's gonna be that's 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 what Street Fighter Alpha 2 looks like if you're playing on this thing uh, if you go to the character select screen that's how it looks I mean it hardly looks like any character select screen at all looks like a happy face or something <laughs> So, yeah, I'm sorry, but Street Fighter Alpha 2 also does not work on this. Or it works, but doesn't let you, doesn't show you anything. 
Another thing is if you try it with the other system, it does work kind of okay. So if you put it on Toy-Con here, you can see, yeah, it loads. So Toy-Con does the job better than the FC16 Go, the Super FC Mobile here. The only thing is that it has terrible sounds and audios. And when you uh, start it, yep, it works. But like I said before, it has those stretch images. So if you don't like those stretch images, then this portable is not for you. <laughs> so, yeah, but FC Mobile, Super FC Mobile, does it better than these. Super then the uh, FC 16 go, but let's try with Superboy. You can tell Superboy also does the job better too. And this is the second version of Superboy. I don't know what I don't know the first version of all these handheld if they are better or not. But these are the this these are the latest version of these portables. So, and you can tell that Superboy handles it with no problem. So yeah, another point for the Superboy and those other things. But here's the here is this one again. Yeah, the best one of them all. <laughs> the can it handle it? If it can, it's great. And like I said, it is it could handle it. So this one, the Retro Duo Portable here is the definite Super Nintendo clone portable. You can tell it can handle Street Fighter Alpha 2 with no problem. It loads it up as if as if it's an ordinary game just like all the rest. So that's great. So for um for the FC16 Go here, the 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 way that it can't handle it. Let's see if it still works. Yeah. The way it can't all the graphics and stuff it really is a big letdown I mean it, it can still have the sounds and controls and all that stuff but it can't run the graphics so if it can't run the graphics there's no reason to pick it up <laughs> I mean you can't if you had this game and this is the only Super Nintendo game you have and you bought this for it you're not gonna be happy about that <laughs> so yeah that's pretty much um, that's pretty much the FC16 go here for you. So, um, do I recommend the FC16 go? Well, that depends if you like the design or not. I mean, the compatibility fail. So, there's no if you bought this for the compatibility sake. If you want to play Super Famicom games on it, you're not gonna be able to do that. If you're gonna play Mario RPG on it, you're not gonna be able to do that. You're gonna play Kirby Superstar on it, you're not gonna be able to do that. Um, you're gonna play Alpha 2 on it. You you get the music and stuff, but you're not gonna be able to play that on that. <laughs> yeah. So unless you, if you want to mod it, you can mod it to play Super Famicom game. But if you buying it and you want to play Super Famicom game out of the box, you're not gonna be able to do that. What you could do, however, is use this to play to use it as an actual um, Super Nintendo alternative so you can use this to play all your Super Nintendo games or if you want to play a portable and take it with you I mean portability for this thing is really good because um, you can use this clamshell design to protect the screen protect protect the controls and you have a really great audio features with this one too as you can tell the game for this the, the gameplay on this are very very loud all the audios and stuff man they they came out crystal clear so with the sound with the audios the audio part of this thing is really great I mean it's one of the reason why I even bought this in the first place so yeah so it has it does that's pretty much the only uh, positive it has it can play games really good it has some really good audios and that's pretty much it actually you can play you can use it as an alternative for the Super Nintendo and and that's all but all the other things like 
you the lack of um, the lack of game support like Mario RPG and Street Fighter Alpha 2 there yeah that is a bummer you can't play Super Famicom game that is a bummer um, you um, it has the the control the d-pad here often cause problems you can't really control your characters accurately like you do on those other three uh, systems I do like the, the layout though the layout is what the layout is pretty much the best part about the systems I mean the first models of the FC 16 go uses a PlayStation d-pad which was terrible I um, try it at a I try it at a um, store once, uh, one of the one of their Chaos version, I think, and they have that PlayStation D pad, and every time you press down, all of these go down with it. So <laughs> it's not really that reliable. I'm glad they're using the Super Nintendo D pad. I'm just, I just kind of disappointed that the D pad is not as good as the one you see on the Retro Dual Portable. Because if you look at this one, the D pad felt really good really accurate really smooth but this d-pad looks like it belongs on the retro do on the console system uh, this d-pad looks like it belongs on um on those um yobo um or on the uh, tomi controllers i mean i have a tomi controllers that has a d-pad that looks almost like this almost has the same feelings too and the controls are really wonky it doesn't it doesn't correspond to your direction at all you try to press up and they hardly go up but if you press forward they jump for some reason and if you press down then they move or something and you want the move to be over here the jump to be up here and all of these to work the way they were but with this one, the D-pad needs a lot of work. If they could revision this one and make the D-pad to feel as accurate as the one on the Retro Duo Portable, that'd be great. But as of now, the control, the buttons and all that stuff feel okay. I mean, they just need to work on the D-pad some more. And the two shoulder button works really good. Not, not nothing wrong with those, but yeah. So those are all the good and bad about the SC16 Go there. So. I have to say, if you're if you're planning to get this, get it just for get it as a Super Nintendo alternative, as a console and not as a portable. Because as a portable, yeah, if you want to play more games on it, you either have to modify it or you have to f find a way to uh, find a way to uh, go through it. Though, if you want to play Super Mario RPG and Street Fighter Two on it, you can certainly try to do any of those. Um, any of those workarounds that people have been doing for years maybe that will work too you can try what I did with the Superboy and have it put it in while it's charging that might work sometime too I tried that with Kirby Superstar and Mario RPG several times with this unit and it, they hardly ever work so <laughs> I'm guessing it is not compatible with that perhaps there might be a lot of other games that is not compatible with that um, I know that Star Fox work on it, so if you like Star Fox, this is for you. If you like Mario and Donkey Kong Country, Yoshi's Island also works on it too. And that's really surprised me considering that Yoshi, Yoshi's Island has a sound has a chip inside it too and it works. Alpha 2, I actually glad that it almost worked because on the FC Twin it hardly worked at all. <laughs> there, the, the only thing we the only thing about Yobo products with SC16 Go like this is that you don't know if it works or not. There might be some model that it may work. I heard that some FC Twin does Street Fighter Alpha 2 does work on some FC Twins. The one that I got never worked, but the one he got might work. Um, there are evidence video evidence out there that out there that prove that Alpha 2 does work on FC FC Twins. I don't know about the FC16 Go, however, this is my only model, so that's pretty much it. Uh, if I get letter, if I should give this a letter grade, however, uh, it will be like a C minus at best. It's not gonna get a D though because it, it's not broken or anything. It works the way it should. It just doesn't deliver as much as the other three. I mean, if you have a retro dual portable though. You could pretty much play Super Nintendo and more. I mean, this one delivers almost everything you could ever want in retro, uh, portable, retro, 
gaming. So you want to play Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Master System, Mark 3 games, uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, all that stuff. Yeah, this one does it all. You just need those adapters to to um, actually have the full experience and they have some really good design control and all that stuff with it too I mean it looks just like I mean the, the, the portable here looks just like a very modern controllers too and the Superboy here Superboy is pretty much as close to a regular Super Nintendo portable as you can too it looks just like a Nintendo products but just um, a little bit more flaw in the d-pad design here like it is kind of stiff but it does work I mean at least it works better than FC16 GO so yeah a C- minus is not a bad grade though if, if they can improve that with the D-pan up they can the grade might go up a little bit but yeah I, I just don't know why they're afraid of Nintendo I mean Ninten the patent for these Super Nintendo is already expired so if you want to make your own custom Super Nintendo portable, you could. You don't even you don't even need to uh, region block it or anything. I, I just don't know why Yobo region block these. I mean, they sell these in Asia and all over the world, and just blocking compatibility from this is not a good sign. I mean, people bought the reason people bought this. It's for convenience sake. I mean, you want to play all your games and games that you have never played before on it. And when you don't have that, then people had no reason to buy it. So, me, I really want to play Super Famicom games on it because I want to try how they'll use with that control. But since it doesn't work, then I can't try it. As you can tell, I really love all the Akira Toriyama stuff in here. So, Go Go Ackman 3 and Dragon Ball Z HD here. Yeah, they're really good. But can't try that on FC16 Go. <laughs> so, yeah. Now, for the comparison part. Let's take this box out of the way and let's compare portables. So, let's put the FC16 Go side by side with all of these other portables. So, Let's take these two out of the way and let's see. Here is how the FC16 Go compared to the Super FC MOBO there. So as you can tell, that's the size comparison. That's how they look if you put them up here. I mean with the with the uh, Super FC MOBO slightly a bit taller. So, you can tell like that. Yep. And from side to side here, just like that. So, Super FC Go out of the way. So FC Mobile out of the way. Let's see how it compares with the Superboy. So, as you can tell, Superboy is a lot bulkier. <laughs> It might be a lot taller too, I guess. I assume. Yep, it is a lot taller. And so you can look them side by side cartridgely. Yep. So let's see how it can compare with the Retro Do Portable. And as you can tell, the Retro Do Portable here, yeah, just like the Superboy, it's it can be also it can also be a little bit bulkier but it has less sides on the retro dual portable there you can stand them both up like this i guess the retro dual portable is a bit smaller in that but if you put them uh, like that retro dual portable is a bit smaller so that's that now let's try it with an actual official nintendo handheld the, G the gbasp now this is the backlit GBSP and you can tell the GBSP is a bit smaller. Very small indeed. I mean they borrow the LNR from the GBASP. But if the GBASP had to open it, <laughs> it's actually taller but thinner though. If you put it in the depth section here, you can tell the GBASP is half as thick. So that's really great. They both share a clamshell design too. And speaking of clamshell design, GBSP, let's try to see what it, 
what it compares to the actual Nintendo DS. Now this is the design that they borrow from. So as you can see here, the actual DS is much smaller, much thicker, and when you open them, they look like that. And you can see side by side. It's actually taller than the Nintendo DS. So that's really good right there. Compared to the Nomad. <laughs> they look like brothers. Except Nomad does not have a clamshell. And it's much bulkier. When it compares to how tall it is, the Nomad beat it by a few inches. Maybe slightly a few inches. Compare it to a Game Gear. Here's the Game Gear. Game Gear is bulkier too, but thanks to this, Game Gear is much smaller. And then side by side when they're tall, the Game Gear is actually taller. Compared to the original GBASP, so that's the original GBASP. That's pretty much the smallest handheld there. Not as small as the SP, but side by side, it's actually that small. So there it is. There it is. That's, um, oh yeah, and we still have this too, the Game Boy. You can't do comparison without the Game Boy, right? <laughs> I mean, the Game Boy is pretty small if you're trying to put it like this. But if you put it like this, the Game Boy actually is a bit taller. The, on the depth, however, the FC16 GO still is the tallest. <laughs> so that's the Game Boy right there. Compared to our very own modern 3DS. And there's there's no uh, comparison. There, there's, there's no... Uh, there's nothing that can beat the size of the SC16 GO here. I mean, the 3DS is much more thicker and smaller, even though it has the same clamshell design. So yeah, SC16 GO, my final opinion, is a good little, uh, it's a decent little portable that you can play Super Nintendo games on, and only Super Nintendo games on. So if you want to play Super Famicom on that thing, you have to modify it. Uh, it doesn't, isn't comparable with every game's Super Nintendo games out there, so some of them might not work. Um, Final Grade, C minus, it's still good. If you are Super Nintendo collectors, you might want to collect this just for that purpose. The controller that came with this worked really well. It's not that good compared to what the one that um, Retrobit does, but it, it's still a very decent little portable. It's, it, it may cost you around 60 or 50 bucks cheaper than Superboy and Retro Duo Portable combined. So <laughs> that's pretty much it. It has a cheaper price. It has a good audio features, uh, good video qualities and all that. But it just doesn't have a lot to deliver. That's all. So I'm Vong and thank you for joining on this uh, review. So I'll see you next time on my uh, new other rev reviews. So